Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So here is the accompanying video for the handicap mark changes. Um, obviously I can talk a little bit more than 280 characters, which I can only get on Twitter. So let's go through those horses that caught my eye and we'll start off with uh, Latam, who is the only horse in this list that actually went up in the handicap. Um, Latam went up one pound to 95. And to be honest, that's not enough. Um, so there's a couple of reasons why I really like that. So first of all, he was in the wrong place. He was out the back and he made his ground down the centre of the track, which isn't normally the place to be. And yet he was still able to get up and win. Obviously, his form when he was second behind uh, Jimi Hendrix looks good. Jimi Hendrix went on to win at Royal Ascot. And this is another reason that I really like this form. So Latam RTR1 beat Spirit Catcher RTR2. That generally works out really well. Um, and to just go up a pound, that's not enough. And I said in my uh, tweet, it, the one pound is very lenient. And as such, it's not a wasted win. Sometimes you get horses. And I, I almost think William Haggis did this with another one of his horses, um, Montasib. He ran in a pointless race and won it and went up four pounds for that. And that really didn't help him at Royal Ascot. Um, I don't believe that Montasib is at the, ho at the top of his mark, but that was kind of a wasted a wasted win. Um, Latam hasn't done that here because he's only gone up a pound. I think off 95 he will still take all of the beating in the Golden Mile. That's where he's going to go. That's the prize money. Off 95 if he gets a good draw or gets a good run through I expect him to take all of the beating in that to be honest. He's one that I think is a group horse still able to run in handicaps. Moving on to the second horse that I like, uh, that's actually my chat bot. Uh, moving on to the second horse that I like, um, Air to Air dropped a pound. Now, I made a tweet on the day that I, I quite often defend jockeys for their rides. I think sometimes people see a horse that doesn't win and doesn't realise that, well, there was a horse in front, where was he supposed to go? But in this instance, I think the jockey got it wrong, and I'm, I don't like criticising jockeys in this instant, in this way, particularly when it's a young jockey like Billy Lochnane. But I know jockeys have jockey coaches. But that's how they teach them how to ride, as in physically, as in the the technique behind it. But do they get training on how to ride a race, as in tactical advice? This instance from Billy was a terrible ride. Um, yet. Yeah, he went down the middle of the track for some reason. I've no idea why. He didn't need to go down the middle of the track. Um, you know, he pulled him out into fresh air, ran down the middle. He should have been sticking in behind those. If you actually watch, the winner comes from the rail. He comes right down that rail. He He's patient. He um, trusts that a gap is going to appear. Billy didn't do that on air to air, and he made his move far too early. And he's ended up finishing fourth after actually coming into the race quite nicely. You can see that his win PR was 81.55. That means he reduced from his starting odds to 81.55% shorter. So he actually looked like he was going to play a big hand in the finish. If he'd stuck behind the horses and waited for the gaps to appear, I think he would have gone very close, if not have it, and if not winning that race. But with that in mind, he's dropped a pound. So he's now only rated 92, and I'm very keen on him. I like the Chelmsford City Cup for him. I don't think the all-weather was an issue. He's obviously won, uh, finished second on the all-weather before. He finished fourth here. I think he's also finished second another time as well. He did. He finished second to Zip, didn't he, three runs ago? Um, yeah, I think the all-weather is fine, and the Chelmsford City Cup is where I'd be aiming him. But that's not for a little while, so I don't know where they're going to go with him next. I couldn't find a race that instantly jumped out at me. But I do want to keep him uh, on sign. I do want to keep an eye out for air-to-air. Um, because I do think he's well handicapped when he gets a better ride. The next horse I want to talk about is Isla Kai, who has made plenty of these videos. He's down a pound to 92. Um, yeah, I think 92 is a mark that he can certainly win off. You know, he's he's gone close up 100 before. He won at Ripon four runs ago in a a bit of a nothing race, but he won it. And then he's disappointed at York, Ascot and at Newcastle. I don't think the all-weather quite suits him. Um, I think he's better on turf. I know he's actually uh, run well before on the all-weather. He's finished fourth here. Uh, that's about it, it looks. He's just finished fourth. Um, but I think he'll be better back on turf. 
And where do I think they should go with him? I think it's an obvious one for him. He won at Ripham. Go back to Ripham. There's this mile handicap, three-year-old plus. It's 30 grand to the winner. 88, uh, 88, 81 to 100. He's rated 92, so he'd get in relatively near the top. So he'd be one of the better horses. It's unlikely, because it's at Ripham, to feature these ridiculously well-handicapped or improving sorts. It'll be a muchness of muchness at Ripham, and I think he should take all of the beating there. He won on soft ground. I don't think he needs the soft ground. I think good ground is absolutely fine for him. Um, it was just that he went to Ripham and found that there was less, it was less competition in terms of um, there was none of the big trainers really sending horses against him. So Isla Kai, back at um, Ripon, I think will uh, go really well. That's not until the 28th of August, but he can certainly have a break now because he has had, what's he had now, five runs this season. Give him all a uh, July off and then come back in August. The next horse I want to talk about is Living the Moment, who dropped a pound to 86. And to be honest, four, he's had four runs in uh, June, and I think we can forgive three of them. So we can forgive Epsom, the stalls didn't open. We can forgive Windsor, too far. And we can forgive Hamilton, doesn't want the soft ground. I think he wants good ground, or, or even rattling fast. His best run came at Catterick when he was uh, he ran a good race for second. So where do I think they should go with him? Well. Four runs ago, four runs, five runs ago now. Wow, five runs ago in May, he finished second at Doncaster behind the Green Man. The Green Man's actually won since, so that was good form. And I actually highlighted that as the race for the Green Man. I'll just wait for that to reload again. Hopefully it will. The Green Man to go for that handicap on Saturday the 20th of May, which he did, and he won. Saturday the 20th of May, this was the handicap. So with that in mind, Live in the moment essentially bumped into a horse that had everything perfect for him that day and live in the moment pushed him all the way to the finish You can see he went 1.06. That's got to be where they come back Give him that break now because he's ran four times in June Wait until the 19th of August and there's this five furlong handicap here for three-year-olds uh, Plus for horses rated 76 to 95. He's rated 86 So he would get in and I would fully expect him to go very very close in this the Racing League on Sky Sports Racing Handicap Stakes over five furlongs. I think five is what he wants. If you actually watched him when he ran over six here, he just got tired late on, whereas the green man finished stronger. Moving on to the next horse, uh, Zoffy. Zoffy dropped a pound for one poor run. It was his only poor run in a little while. I mean, he finished sixth for Ascot, wasn't beaten far. He finished second in the Chester Cup, fourth in the Cesarowicz, third in the Stayers Handicap at York. It's got to be where he goes back. Yeah. Running off 94 means he's actually um, a pound lower than when finishing sixth. And only a pound higher than when finishing second in the Chester Cup. This has got to be the race he comes back at. I thought, well, we know Alfred Boucher was incredibly well handicapped that day. And Frank and Stella, I thought, ran a really good race and is still one that I would have liked to have seen a few more runs from. But I think she's been retired. Zoffi ran a really good race for third that day. Off a similar mark, this has got to be the race where they come back. Zoffi, give him that break now because maybe, it's not until the 23rd of August, maybe the runs have just caught up with him. His second, he was then sixth, and then he was 15th, all in the space of May, June, July. So give him a little time off now and don't come back until the 23rd of August. He's done it before. He went Goodwood July. And then he went York. I think if they skip Goodwood this year, where he didn't particularly run well, finishing seventh, um, skip that, go straight to York. I think they can go really close in the York race and then potentially in the Cesarewich as well. This is the Cesarewich where he was behind Run for Oscar, Vino Vitrix and Not So Sleepy. Great prize money. A horse with no name was actually back in fifth that day. The next horse that caught my eye dropping, he started to drop now, is uh, Brunch. He's down two pounds for his effort, went sixth um, at Newcastle in a race that didn't suit him. I know Latam was able to get up from a held up position, but he's so well handicapped. Brunch is just starting to get down to a mark that I'm very interested in him, in him off. Um, and where do I think they can go with him? Well, I think it's an obvious one for him as well. He's got to go to this race. The, is it this race? He's got to go to this race, sorry. He's got to go to the Clipper Handicap Stakes. Uh, Three-year-old is a feature handicap or a heritage handicap. Over seven furlongs and 192 yards. This was the last time he ran 
over seven furlongs and 192 yards at York. He was beaten by Cruyff Turn, who we know is a York specialist, actually won recently for us at Ripon, and that came off a mark of 104. I think Brunch was only beating the neck that day. Why would you not go back of 101, three pound lower mark for a feature handicap? Good prize money, great prize money in actual fact. Go back there, you know he likes York. I think you'd be almost guaranteed a really good run from him uh, in a feature handicap. And that's where they've got to go with Brunch. I think that's an obvious one for me. But again, I think sometimes trainers and owners, they just go, oh, he's, he's running, you know, he's working well at home. Let's run him in a mile handicap at Doncaster, at Epsom, at Newcastle. They don't look at the form. They don't look at previous efforts. And they just go, well, there's a race coming up that he could run in. Whereas there's a more obvious one or one that he's clearly suited to that they just skip because they kind of throw quite a few trainers, I think, throw as many bullets as they can and hope that one of them one of them hits or as many, I don't know, um, as many arrows as they can and hope that one um, hits. Whereas I think sometimes they need to be more careful with their placing of their horses. So that's definitely where I would be sending brunch to York on the 24th of August. The next horse that caught my eye, but I'm not totally sure what to do with him. Well, I do know what to do with him, but I don't know where they were run. It's Empire State of Mind, who's disappointed at Newcastle and probably didn't quite stay at um, a Newmarket over one mile one. Back to a mile, I think really suits him. And I think the ground is all important for him. I think he needs a bit of cut in the ground. And that's where they've got to be looking for. They could enter him in the mile races and wait until they get a bit of cut. As soon as they do, they run him. When they don't, don't bother running him. The, the, can, the danger that you have with these horses is you run them again on good ground. You run them again on good ground. Okay, they're dropping in the handicap because they're disappointing. But then when they get the right ground, they're in such a low, uh, no confidence whatsoever, it does affect horses and they then don't run well. Ross Collin, I think, was a great example at Royal Ascot. Had looked like he'd been planned and plotted for the race really well, but he'd run over so many races in different trips on ground that wouldn't have suited him you know things that weren't suiting him and then when he came back to Royal Ascot he ran really really poorly and I think sometimes they go a little bit too far owners and trainers with trying to get a horse really well handicapped and they forget about getting that horse confidence if you find a horse that is well handicapped that then does win the next time they can certainly go on and win again such as the green man earlier this season um, and there's been a few others. Jimi Hendrix, he was very well handicapped, slowly going back up because he's getting races that suit him and he's now got confidence. So Empire State of Mind is one that I definitely want to keep an eye out for uh, when we get a bit of cut in the ground. The next horse that has definitely dropped to a nice mark is Mondamich. He's down to 96 now and I think he's well handicapped. The reason I haven't found a race for him is I think they won't bother with the handicap next time. I think they'll go back to this John Smith's City Walls Stakes. They only finished second last time, but they were behind Royal Acclaim, who's then went, they were the, who was then sent off favourite for the um, Nunthorpe, I believe, Royal Acclaim. So Mondamage probably bumped into one that day. OK, Royal Acclaim hasn't quite gone on this season to be that Group 1 star um, and didn't win the Nunthorpe, obviously, last year. But I think that's where they end up. If they run him in a handicap, I'd definitely be interested to see where they go with him because I do think he's well handicapped of 96 but I think um, they'll end up in that listed race again. Cause again, sometimes I think they look at races and go, well, he's run well in that before, so let's go there. Whereas actually, there's a similar race in a handicap, an easier race, potentially even for more prize money sometimes. It's easier because it's a handicap rather than it being enlisted or a group race. Um, and I think that's another mistake that some trainers make. Final horse I want to talk about is Prince of Pillow, who is one of those who's dangerous so in two runs he's now dropped seven pounds which is very interesting he's dropped three pounds to 95 now um he was rated 102 when he turned up at royal ascot now he's interesting because he's dropped seven pounds in two runs the concern i kind of want him aimed at the air gold cup but that's a little way away yet and i don't want a little way away it's not me trying to say railway but without being able to say it it's a little way away Oh my God, now it's awful, sorry. Um, it's some time away, and if they keep running him in races that are against him or not really for him, you know, don't suit him, he could end up being a bit like Ross Collin. Very, very well handicapped, 
but comes into the race in such appalling form that he then doesn't run his race. I hope they kind of give him maybe one more run um, and then turn up to the uh, Air Gold Cup with him. Give him a run, though, but, you know, if they don't want to win, don't try and win, but sit, finish third or fourth. Don't finish out the back if you can't, if you don't have to. Finish third or fourth, end up in the Air Gold Cup, and I think Prince of Pillow would go well. So there's a few thoughts. I think the main ones from the... Well, I like them all, to be honest, but Latam for the Golden Mile. I know he's 8-1 to favourite, but I think he wins that. I really do. Um, Zoffy should run well in the stairs if he goes there. Live in the moment should definitely go for that Doncaster race. Give him a break. Brunch at York. I really like him, and it's a feature handicap in this Clipper Handicap Stakes. It's not until the 24th of August, but it's definitely one to keep your eye on. And, yeah, watch out for Empire State of Mind when it gets a bit cut in the ground. Thanks for listening. Um, hopefully there's plenty of winners or future winners from, the, uh, from this list. And I might be back tomorrow. What day is it today? Wednesday. I might do a premium analysis video for tomorrow. Um, if you've been following my Twitter account, if you can still see my tweets, you'll have seen one that I've highlighted again for a race on Friday. Um, it might be Friday or Saturday in the Coral Challenge. Definitely think that horse is going to go well. If you don't know who it is, check my Twitter feed and uh, you'll see who I'm talking about. Thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of your week.